Good morning, friends, and God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you and all of us together as we gather ourselves in this beautiful and sacred space on this lovely Lord's Day morning. It is good to see everyone this morning. Glad that you have come. May I remind you that we gather in this space every Sunday so that we can worship God and hear the living word that God will speak to us as the scriptures are read and proclaimed. Therefore, whatever your age, whatever your gender or gender identity, know that you are welcome in this space. Whatever your race, your ethnicity, your background, know that Christ welcomes you here. Whatever your marital status or your sexual orientation, it does not matter. We welcome you. And whether you come this morning with much or with little, hurting in body, mind, or spirit, know that here you have a place and a home. We're glad that you've come. And whether you come this morning trying to find God and discover God, or whether you and God have been long companions, know that you're welcome in this place. We are all welcome as we gather together to proclaim this message of hope, this gospel of grace, and the peace of God that passes every human understanding. So let us stand together as Tim leads us in our opening sentences. Lord of life, we now come to you. Lord of God, by your grace, we Lord of life, we now come to you. Lord of God, we now give our hearts to you. Remember the promise of Jesus.
truth so God this beautiful morning minds to reflect and meditate upon you and Jesus message of grace eyes that will come to see you in the world out there and in the hands we hold and ears that will be opened to your voice always listening for your living word and then oh god hearts and hands and feet and mouths that will leave this place and proclaim and do your message of love and grace and justice in the world all these things we pray in the name of christ our lord and our savior and together we say Merciful God, trusting in the promise of Jesus that you are faithful and forgive and set us free, we now in silence, acknowledging the many ways we have brought our nurtured hurts and pain, rather than compassion, joy, and forgiveness. Hear us, heal us, and set us free to begin again. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Jesus said, with God all things are possible. Losses are recovered, mistakes are forgiven, lives are redeemed and made whole again. Be assured that you belong to Christ and trust his promise that God is full of grace and compassion and will forgive, restore, and set us free to be again. Amen. Today's first lesson is from the reading of the letters of James, chapter 13, verses, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verses 13 and 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace.
disciples came to the village of Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you all arguing about on the way here? But they became silent, for on the way, they were arguing about who of them was going to be the greatest. Jesus sat down, gathered them around him and said, whoever wants to be first must become last of all and a servant. And then Jesus took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, Jesus said to them, whoever welcomes a little child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not just me, but the one who sent me. May we hear what the Spirit is saying and what the Spirit will say as this scripture is proclaimed. Amen. Whoever becomes like this little one will be the greatest in the kingdom. You who welcome the little one, welcome not just me, but the one who Sanity. I don't know about the rest of you, but my heartstrings, not being a parent myself, but my heartstrings always get strung very powerfully when I see young dads and moms who, who really, really, really love interacting with their, with their children. And one of the best of them is my, my niece's husband. And every time I see that young up-and-comer CPA, financial analyst, get down on the floor and really play and interact with his two little boys, it just really touches my heart. Just this past week, uh, I was with them, and after the kids had been tucked away for the night, we were enjoying a little sip of scotch, and as we do, we started talking. The house was quiet. And that veteran of the Iraq War, pretty tough guy, told me that his kids were restoring, restoring some of the wonder and the joy that he had lost. They just trust, he said, they just trust that it's all gonna be okay and that the universe means them no harm. His little boys are excellent healers and teachers and therapists, and they don't even know it. And he's not the only parent who's told me the very same thing over and over and over again. And stories like that one, and just watching our own terrific young parents here at this church interact with their children. It just reassures me. It reassures me that despite all of the disheartening statistics we hear about modern family life, there are lots and lots and lots of children who are blessed with superb parents who not only want them and take really, really good care of them, but who delight, who take utter delight in their little worlds. Their adult lives are changed for the better because of things that they experience and relearn with their children. And I think Jesus felt the very same way. And one of the things that I admire most about Jesus was his reverence, his reverence and respect for children. Even though he had no children or a wife, so we are told, it looks like Jesus knew for sure, without a doubt, that most children, and I'm thinking preteen here, they live in something in a world all too many adults leave behind. And the way I read the Gospels, Jesus seemed to care a whole lot about children and all the wondrous things that are going on in their little worlds. And he wanted adults to see it too. 
I think he was very concerned about the world that they were going to grow up into. The values and the, the ideals that were slowly but surely being pressed into their little heads and hearts. They're coming to learn what enemies are. And to stay away from those who are different. And what about what about the images of God? You know, the negative images of God. The tyrants in the sky who would only be for them if they did everything properly and perfectly. In that culture, those little bundles of joy evolved into assets. Assets of the future value. That is if they lived into their teens or into their adult years. Children were God's blessings for sure, but they were blessings for the future when they became useful and productive and they started working and contributing to the household. And then, of course, later, children were expected to take care of aging parents. But Jesus didn't see it that way. Jesus really valued children just in and of themselves. He taught that little kids had enormous teaching value for, for adults. And that children could help convert adults into the kingdom of God. The Gospels say in all four that Jesus took children up in his arms and he blessed them. That he played with kids and he taught them about a gracious God, a heavenly Father, who loved them, not for their future value, but just in and of themselves, just because they were God's children, full of wonder and trust and simple joy, and that they bore God's image and light. I love that story in the Gospels where the disciples started scolding the people who were bringing their little ones to Jesus for a blessing. And Jesus just got up in their faces. And he told his own disciples that children had a rightful place in God's kingdom because they themselves were living inside of it. They were still in it as children. They had not unlearned that wisdom from above that James talks about. They perceived it. They recognized it. They understood its value. Let the children come unto me, forbid them not. I bet that made some people's jaws drop. Because those kinds of things just weren't said about children back then in that culture. And that's one reason why we in the Reformed and Presbyterian tradition baptize children and welcome them at the communion table. The promise is for you and for your children. It is for everyone, says the scriptures, whom the Lord our God calls. The bottom line is that Jesus was very, very, very partial to children, even though he didn't have any himself, for reasons that were very different from his own culture. And I don't think it was because he thought children were perfect. Because as you all know, children can be naughty in their own special little ways. Jesus never once said that children were perfect, or perfectly pure, or without fault. But he did say something that sounded strange to the people who heard it. And it still sounds a little strange to us. He said that when we welcome and when we value a little one, in his name. And by that I think he meant, you know, when we open ourselves to them and to the little world that they inhabit, that then we can learn, we can receive, we can be transformed ourselves. When we welcome them, we welcome him and his message, and we welcome the one who sent him, he said. That one who is for us not against us, who so loves the world. And I think his grown-up disciples hopefully started to listen to that 
I hope they themselves started taking time for little ones because it is good for the soul. It is much more beneficial than finishing a project or impressing the boss or identifying enemies or enlarging our earning capacity or coming to fear and resent God. And I wonder if the thing in children that Jesus wanted to restore in adults was this capacity, this delight for wonder due to one thing, and that is a deep and abiding trust. And I think that is the thing about faith that children can teach us. A trust in a divine benevolence and goodness that is for us and against us. That the world is full of wonders. A trust that another child who may look different belongs to the very same God. That God and our humanity define or transcend all that difference. Differences that unfortunately start to threaten adults somewhere along the way. All of which means that kids, especially little ones, can be really good teachers and therapists. When you welcome them as they are, you welcome me. You welcome the message I've given you about God. And when you welcome me in that message, you welcome the one who sent me, the real God. Not the one you fear, not the one you've been taught to resent or to please, but the real one. And that's when Jesus gave them a sermon illustration that really rocked their world. He put a little boy or a little girl down in front of them. As one preacher said, three feet tall, no job, no power, zero net worth. Put a little child down in front of them and told them that that child was God's, was God's gift to them, a healer, a teacher, one who can put back in you some of that trust that you've lost along the way. So if you'll get down into their world, these little ones can show you how to trust again. But most importantly, trust in something and someone bigger than yourself or your investment portfolio or your degrees or your politics or even your guns. James had to say it all over again 20 years later when he was the Bishop of Jerusalem. He said the wisdom of heaven is, is just pure, it's peace-loving, it's considerate. It's humble, impartial, earnest. All of that to say this, if any of us here are feeling disconnected, scared, paranoid, resentful, suspicious, angry, afraid of God, afraid of other people, then take Jesus at his word. Get back in touch with the basics of faith. Pay attention to children. Learn how to trust in the goodness of God. Become like them, he said. But here's the thing. Sometimes it's a choice, just like the choir sang in the anthem. Will you do this? Or will you not? Will you trust the one? It's a choice. But I think that's why parents really appreciate their children. Not just because they're their children or that they are parents or proud of those children, but because through them, those who are building it open to it really start to relearn some things that unfortunately got lost somewhere along the way. And there's a lot of proof of that in the people and the young parents that I know here. Trust 
that the love and grace of our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parent, is 1,000 times more fierce and undying and stronger than the best earthly parent. When we do that, it might just help us to believe with all of our hearts what Paul said, that come hell or high water, that nothing in all of creation, nothing in the past, nothing in the present, and nothing out there in the unknown future, none of that will be able to separate us from the love and the grace and the mercy and the kindness of God. Will you trust that? Let us stand and say,
So we pray for the war torn concerns of creation. And in particular, on the heels of September 11th, we pray for all the families that have been negatively impacted by the violence. May they find your still waters. God, your love is like a river. We believe that to be true. So keep us afloat, carry us home, let our faith overflow, and in the places of our world where the waters are troubled, give us the courage to keep building your promised day here. And now, let us join our voices together with conviction to pray the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, Gracious God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. And so we praise you for all of your mercies, for your goodness that created us, for your grace that sustains us, for your love that keeps us, and for your patience that bears with us. God, help us to love you and to be thankful for all of your good and perfect gifts as we serve you and delight to do your will. All this empowered through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.